Now, to get to the real world, to become a real person, and not live with a mask or manners, take off that mask of manners and try to be real. The more you pretend, the more you have to invent and develop false excuses for it, the more devices you have to use. Like if I want to see somebody who didn't want to see me, I would do all kinds of things, which I know when somebody does that, I don't look at them as correct. I feel sorry for them, because they don't know how to be honest. And if you don't know how to be honest, the penalty is suffering and pain. It all ends. But when you're honest, that means when someone that you love rejects you, that's it. You accept it. And you don't say, why did you do it? I've never done anything wrong. Just say, is that the way you want? No. And you go away. But you don't fight back. You don't say, oh, man, you goddamn dumb boy. Fine, but people do that because they're sick, because they don't know the meaning of love. Love is to stop climbing up on people and making demands on them and give them space to live and give them the opportunity to grow and try to help them grow. And if they can't make it, if they remain too far behind, it is cruel for you to stay with them. It is better for you to separate, diminish the relationship. Because don't think that you're good if you stay with a person that can't make it. If you're good natured, the person climbs on your back and abuses you, and they can't make it, you're only perpetuating the abuse. The best thing to do is to try to help them in every way you know how. And once they become, once they begin to grow up, they can't afford to lean on you anymore. They turn away and they say, hey, there's a lot of things I can do to make life better for other people. And once they take that on, they don't have guilt anymore. And they don't have a low self-sufficiency. And they don't wonder, wonder whether anyone will love them. Because when you're lovable, when you're out in the world doing wonderful things, and you love yourself, in that sense, other people will love you. And when they come over to put their arms around you, to give you that love, you say, give it to someone else because they need it more than I do. See, because once you're successful as a human being, you don't wonder whether anyone will call you anymore. So many people used to call you, and everybody was trying to date you. That's insecure. You just go on being the best person you know how to be, and the rest falls in line. Whatever falls in line is appropriate. Now, if you become the best person you are, then somebody gets you in an alley and runs a knife into your ribs, and take your money away and runs away, you walk, little man, in pain to the nearest place you can get and seek aid. They will say, that son of a bitch. You know, they're first on me. Because that son of a bitch is you in another environment. That's a very hard thing to learn. Now, do you have any questions about what I'm saying? I'm not telling you what to do. I'm suggesting that you consider the other person, which we never do. When somebody hurts me, I always say, that no good son of a bitch. When somebody lies to me, that son of a bitch is a liar. See? Instead of saying, gee, I wonder what kind of environment they had come from to force them to behave in such a way. They can't even afford humanity. So, when you grow up, you stop feeling sorry for yourself. But you got to work at it. you got to work hard at it. I want you to fight But I thought you were just putting down any affiliation. I'm putting down any kind of behavior that deals with mainly the self. That's where sickness comes. When you say, you know, nobody loves me. I'm 33 years old, I'm not married. And Jennifer's got a car and a house and a yacht, and her husband brings a lot of things, and her husband loves her, and my husband doesn't love me, and all that kind of shit. See, this is the shit that I'm talking about. That that's the investment you make. And if that's where you're at, I can guarantee suffering until the day you die. That I guarantee. If you will allow it, nobody loves me, I'm 33 years old, I'm not married, my husband never whispers sweet nothings into my ear. That's it. That's when you're sick. Now, if your husband isn't warm and lovable, you ought to feel sorry for him. Your life is going to say, the poor guy doesn't even know what love is. Instead of saying, you know, wear a low cut guy, and say, come at me, Sam, you know, try to appear tempting, you know, all that shit is what I'm talking about. That shit never brings gratification to you. You know what it brings? Shit. If you don't understand what I'm talking about. All the false approaches in that sense bring nothing but shit. You say, well, I gotta have some kind of temporary relief. And it's no relief because it isn't real. You know, when you tell somebody to scratch your back, you got a terribly itchy mosquito bite. And there's a sheet of glass between you and the scratch. There's no relief. 
So, sex and loneliness, uh, where you generate moments of pleasure because you've been so sad, you pay off heavily because those moments are only very momentary and they come to a quick end and you land with a problem. But if you don't have a problem, there's an end. Let me put it in. Do you think you know what I mean? When you don't have the problem in the first place? You don't have to prove anything to anybody. I'm a desirable woman. Somebody will want me. Or a guy says, I fucked nine women this weekend. What's he trying to prove? Why doesn't he get up and says, I fucked one girl in six months. What are you trying to prove? What do you have to prove to other people? Why are men always trying to walk around proving that they're very virile? Why are they trying to prove that they got everybody flocking to them? There's a problem there. Why do I tell you I built the Fontainebleau Hotel? What's the matter with me? Why do I have to tell you that? See, because the people that are always trying to prove something, in that sense, are the people that live in poverty. You know, Howard Hughes doesn't walk around opening his wallet showing you a thousand dollars. He doesn't do that. You know who does that? A guy that was always called a bum, never mount to anything. Why you got never get nowhere and you always get a shoe shine boy. When he makes it, he comes back to that area with his forty dollar suit and thing, and he opens the wallet to these kids. You see. He made it. But he has to come back every week. You understand what I mean? These people this is the sickness I'm talking about. If only somebody could love me. Well, turn around and ask yourself this question. If you were a guy, would you love you? Hell no. Because I'm not that lovable. See? So, stop worrying about whether people will love you. Once you have compassion for other people, and get off your fucking wheelbarrow of the self, get away from the mirror, break every fucking mirror in your home, comb your hair, take a bath, remain clean. And then it's easier. But whatever affection you get then will be real. And when you go into the false way, you only drag the false end of the picture.